Hey everybody, Saturday morning about 9 o'clock or so, was invited to go over to a fellow homebrew club member to his house for a brew day. And we're going to go over there and check it out and see what's going on in his place. Hey, welcome to Short Circuit of Brewers. We are here on location at uh, AJ's house. He is one of the members of Sods and we're brewing, what style are we brewing today? A uh, oatmeal stout. Okay. Uh, what kind of uh, what kind of grain bill you got going on? Um, I'm using a uh, a little bit of a, a new malt called um, Kara Brown. Okay. It has a graham cracker flavor to it. Uh, plenty of oats, um, and then the, some chocolate and some roast malt. Okay. Now um, behind us, he's got an electric brewing system that's uh, going on here, and he's got the Elsinore control system and uh, a couple of oil coils from Blickman, and uh, pretty interesting setup. Um, how long have you been brewing, AJ? Uh, 22 years. 22 years. And what, and just significantly, this is brew number... 222. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a lot of twos there. Yeah, right. So what, uh, what got you started all those years ago in brewing? Uh, basically what was on the shelves. Okay. Uh, you know, Not a lot of 20, 20, options. 22 years ago, it was fizzy, frozen, and flavorless, and that was about it. I got you. Yeah. So what, what actually, when did you, you know, find home brewing and then how did you find home brewing? Actually, I worked for a guy named Bob Cotterman okay. who owned, uh, back, back in the day, it was, uh, it was Como Bike Shop. But he moved from Como to Goodale and he had some extra space in his warehouse and tried to figure out what to do with it. So he, at the time, he was a home brewer. So he started selling homebrew supplies and I was building bikes for him as, as a kid back then. And I got uh, I got I got uh, caught up in it and uh, started buying supplies and he taught me how to make make beer and here I am. Cool, really yeah. cool. So how long have you been? Uh, you know, a lot of people start on propane and, and other type of systems like that. I imagine maybe you started on the stove or something and then yeah, graduated to kitchen stove and got cooler for a long time. And then when I when I moved here, I moved up to uh, propane, which I was I was brewing here in the basement with propane, and that didn't go over too well with the neighbors, <laughs> so I converted to electric. Okay, yeah. I got you. And then uh, you are using the Elsinore system, which is uh, Raspberry Pi based? Yeah, it's called the hose head, yeah. Okay, the hose head, okay, very good. And then uh, it is like a, it has a web-based interface, is that yeah. right? Okay, very good. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, a, it's command line until you get to the browser, and then the browser uh, runs the brewery. And it, it's really nice, because I mean, I can, I can control it from my phone, on my iPad, I, you know, when, I'm, when I'm upstairs at the, at the computer, I can check on things and stuff like that. It's really nice. I don't have to be down here all the time. Nice, nice. Yeah. So uh, what's your what's your process generally take like time wise during, you know, with, with that system and doing all grain batch? What, is, what what kind of time frame do you take usually to, to do it for a whole brew day? Uh, pretty much about six hours. Okay. I, I, I tend to uh, try and uh, cross all the T's and dot all the I's as I go through, through the process. So usually uh, uh, set up to clean up is about six hours. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Now I noticed uh, as you're brewing there, I noticed a little bit of a unique process. Uh, walk me through what you do that's maybe a little bit abnormal because <laughs> you've got kind of a three vessel system, but you're using a couple of the vessels in a different way than like a traditional straight up, you know, streamlined or three tier Herm system. Mm -hmm. What what explain that process to to the viewers how you do that? Well, basically what I'm doing is the what would be the boil kettle gets stacked onto a couple of uh, milk crates. Okay. And that becomes the hot liquor tank for the sparge water, the mashing water and the sparge water. Okay. And then once those two processes are done, I pull the milk crates out, dump, make sure it's drained out a little bit, retool it, hook it back up, and then it, I transfer the wort into there when, when, the, when the sparge time comes. Okay. And then I noticed the one vessel that you had the, the, the actual like recirculation coil in, what are you doing with that? Well, uh, I have that work out such that the... Uh, the um, I put PBW in the water for the, okay. for, the, for the coil. So that water bath, at the end, what I do is I, I, I scoop out all the grains from the mash tun, rinse it out real good, and then pump with the, with the, with the mash pump uh, the liquid from that kettle into the mash tun. So basically what that does is it cleans out the hoses, cleans out the pump, they're ready to go again for the next brew, and then it, 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 it runs a, a cycle of um, a PBW through the mash tun. So okay. that, 
So basically all I've got to do is just rinse it back out and start over again. Yeah, I mean, I thought that was a really neat idea whenever I saw you yeah. doing that. So, yeah. I mean, traditionally I, I, I use a, a, do a system where I'm, you know, actually sparging with that water, but yeah. I thought that was really interesting. And then, yeah. th now, you know, with, you do kind of like a, a single batch sparge. Yeah. Um, tell us about, do you, how is the efficiency with that? I mean, is it, it uh, is it very good? Is well, it, it's, yeah, it, it, it officially is referred to as a no sparge. Okay. Uh, and what I do is to save a little bit of time, what would be that trickle down sparge water um, I just use to mash out with. Okay. So what I do is I uh, bef before I recycle that uh, that that hot the, uh, the the boil kettle, um, I run about 175 degree water into the into the mash tun. That's that's what, that, that helps me reach mash out temperatures, okay. and then I move on. Okay. So you're so when, whenever you're draining your boil kettle of the sparge water, so to speak, yeah. you're raising the temperature to mash out as well. And then do you like do you stir a little bit yeah. when you when you do that? And then yeah. you do a traditional like burloff or yeah. Well, well by, by the time I, I, I run the hot liquor into the um, into the mash tun to mash out, I've also had the um, the, the, the hot liquor tank turned up to uh, mash out basically achieve mash out temperature. Okay. So um, I have that going on, and then um, I, I run it all at once. So like so okay so I, I understand if I understand correctly you you raise the hot liquor tank temperature up with the wort circulating through the coil. Yes. So that's raising it up, and then also you're taking the water that's in the mm -hmm. uh, boil kettle, essentially, and transferring it at 175 degrees, so you ramp everything up all at once. It's, it's a dual process, okay. yeah. So, so basically, by the, by the time I transfer the water, um, within five minutes, I've, I've got my mash out temp, and I'm ready to go. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. Well, I really appreciate you uh, letting us come and see your process oh, today, yeah. and uh, Really enjoyed checking out the system. I always love checking out other people's systems and yeah. and seeing how people do. You know, it's it's always really cool to see, like how somebody does something differently or you know what process or some kind of little mm -hmm. tip that people can uh, people can learn. But uh, really appreciate it. And if you guys want to learn more about home brewing and all sorts of other home brewing related stuff, click that subscribe button. This has been Brian for Short Circuit Brewers on location at AJ's Brewery. <laughs> it's a cold pizza brewery, right? Yeah. <laughs> Because every time he brews, the pizza's always getting cold. So we'll see you on the next video.